My adjusted gross income for 2021 was $1,030,401. I would expect a principal to make so much more than that. I, w I wonder why that is. It feels low to me for a principal software engineer. My name is Steve, Meta, your overachieving cousin that your parents always compare you to, and I'm an L7 principal engineer. So Steve is lucky. Along with my wife, our W2 income is I'm getting goosebumps. Oh, can you imagine making that much money? Steve Hewen, a principal software engineer at Amazon, makes over $1,030,301 a year. Today, we dive into his 18-year career to understand the exact breakdown of his income, how he got to where he is today, and most importantly, what we can do to be just as successful. I looked up his LinkedIn really quickly. He has a newsletter. He went to the University of Washington. So he graduated in 2005, and then his first job out of college was in 2006, which means, Humer is right, Amazon was his first job his first and only job, and he's been there now almost 18 years, which is insane. Insane for a couple of reasons. You were able to continue growing at one company. You had a breadth of responsibility. You kept leveling up. And then also in the current market, you weren't laid off, which means even as a principal engineer, Steve's title was not inflated. He was probably compensated as much as he's worth, or maybe even a little bit less because he's been absolutely killing it. Let's see how much money this man made at the height of his career. When I first started in my career, nobody ever sat me down and went over exactly how much money they made and talked through how they were thinking about it. So true. Yes, income is taboo. I do think we're in a world now where people are democratizing access to knowledge. And so a lot of people are pretty upfront about it. Hopefully he can share some knowledge about how he got promoted, what he had to do and some of those interpersonal relationships while he was Amazon. So I'm excited. My addressed gross income for 2021 was $1,030,401. I was like, I don't think he passed a mill. He passed a mill in 2021. Damn, Steve. That's crazy. That's awesome. I, res I respect the shit out of that. Welcome to A Life Engineered, where we take an engineering approach to your life and career. My name is Steve, Meta, your overachieving cousin that your parents always compare you to, or, hey, mister, you forgot your card. And I'm an L7 principal engineer. On this channel, I give- How, how baller must that be to say, hi, my name is Steve. I'm an L7 principal engineer at Amazon. That just hits different. Like when I say something like that, like, hi, my name is Nevin. I'm a junior software engineer uh, looking for a job. It just, it just don't hit the same. Having more money means you can consume more and rarer things. Nobody is defined by their consumption. It doesn't impress me, who you are and your deeds do. Are you creating things, expressing yourself or making the world a better place? Are you an interesting person? You stand for something. Can you tell a good story and a funny joke? Do you make people feel better? That impresses me. There are gonna be two reactions to my income. First, there will be the people that make more than me or a question why I don't make more. Super true. I think someone way wiser than me, I think said uh, something along the lines of, we don't, people don't remember what you did. They remember how you made them feel. As you continue through your life, what I try to do every day is just try to be a good person, treat people with respect, treat them with kindness and help everyone around me. And honestly, it, it serves you well by doing that because people remember the people who help them. And one day they become successful and they come back and they help help them back. When they make it and you make it, like that bond, that, that bond is unbreakable. I'm telling you, it's unbreakable. Compensation at my current company is heavily stock-based and largely depends on market conditions. Some years I do really well and outperform other companies. Other years, it looks like I got a demotion. If you make more money than me, good for you. Truly happy for you. If you still think that I could be doing better after watching- <laughs> The way he said truly happy for you, like I know he's truly happy, but like his face just did not change. Uh, that was kind of funny. Uh, okay, that kind of answered my question why, why I was like, I hope in market conditions when there's a recession, he didn't go down in salary, but I guess his salary is probably going to stay the same because it's so equity heavy, which is great. I mean, Amazon's an amazing company. Have you seen that stock? But your net worth is not a stand-in for your personal worth. Not gonna feel worse because others are doing better. Success isn't a zero sum game. Damn, this is like You'll career advice. Like we haven't even talked about money and he's just like, yo dude, like it's not, it's not the biggest thing in the world. I will say like, it's easy for someone who is very, very wealthy to be like money isn't everything. And even though we all truly believe it, I believe it too. And I'm not that rich helping people and being happy. Happiness is the key to life, Like money helps. And until you have money, it's probably what you're gonna be chasing. Honestly, it's probably what you should be chasing. I'm not sharing to flex, but to give you actual numbers and to give my mental model and how I think about my income. This is useful if you wanna have a similar career. Yo, we got some B -roll. Software engineer in the US. But this income is not guaranteed. The market could completely tank, it could get laid off, the world could change fundamentally. When things change, they change really fast. That's why along with my numbers, I'll also let you know how I'm thinking about writing out the choppiness. Sorry to let you down ladies, but I'm taken. The tax return from earlier is a joint tax return. So household income that's inclusive of my wife's and my own. Our income can be broken down into two broad categories. 
All right, so Steve just said he's not trying to flex, and then he just flex. He's like, hey, I get a woman, I get money, I got a YouTube channel, L7, principal engineer, Amazon. Nice to meet you. Damn, Steve. Uh, categories, wage income or W2 income in the US, and non-wage income or investment income. Then Uncle Sam takes his cut, which leaves us with what we take home. Let's start with non-wage income. We made $355,139 in 2021 in this category. Where else did he get $400,000 from? This is a slice of income where we don't directly trade our time for money. I'd like this portion of income to grow over time, but it doesn't need to happen immediately. I'm willing to invest in it over the long term to see a big jump in the future. Case in point, my YouTube channel took in $289.48 in 2021. On okay. Dude, we're still missing 390 grand on 101,900 views. In 2022, as of today, income is $8,542.89 on 1,983,413 views, which represents a nearly 30 times growth in revenue and 20 times growth in views. Outside of YouTube, I made $354,850 okay. on non-wage okay, income. The largest portion of this, 331,107, came from my investments in cryptocurrencies. This is another example of- Damn, what? Oh God, I feel so inadequate right now. Man made almost $400,000 in crypto and I lost money. You can knock crypto all you want, but it's been really good for me over the years. I started investing in 2015, mostly in Bitcoin and Ethereum and some smaller coins. Crypto gains usually come from selling and not from hodling. In 2021, I started divesting in Bitcoin and I put more into Ethereum since the network doesn't require as much electricity. This is so much better for the planet long term, but don't come at me, Bitcoin bros. I'm not anti-Bitcoin. I still have some, just not as much as before. To round out the other non-wage income, $5,837 came from dividends and $18,155 came from capital gains on non-crypto investments. Mostly appreciation from- To do a quick recap, out of the $400,000 non-wage income, I'm not that good at quick maths, but 80, 90% came from crypto, little bit came from YouTube, little bit came from other investments and dividends. This underscores a couple of points. One, your investment strategy needs to be longitudinal. You wanna make an investment so that the payoff is years later. Time in the market is better than timing the market. A focus on maximizing your investments within a particular year will undermine your long-term prospects. Which leads to two, when you experience losses, you shouldn't panic sell all of your investments. I brought it up in a different video, but I sold my long-term investments in 2007, 2008, which will affect my net worth by more than a million dollars by the time I retire. Yo. It's okay to be a bit cash. Wait, what? Because he sold in 2007, 2008, he lost out on a million dollars of growth, basically? Be a bit cash heavy now, but don't liquidate everything, especially if there's a penalty for doing so. And three, most importantly, when you have a good year and receive a windfall, you should not substantially increase your lifestyle. If I had bought a fancy boat last year, this year's losses would really sting. And I'd have a floating money hole. Hmm. I mean, okay, yeah, yeah, they would sting in that you have less money, but you could write it off as a tax break for a business expense. You could just film a video on a boat every three weeks and that's enough. Like that, that's cool. Also, I think, okay, no, but boat will depreciate, which I think you can also write off the depreciation. I don't know how this works, get a CPA, but there's some benefits. More on lifestyle inflation in a bit. Let's talk about wage income. Yes. Along with my wife, our yes. W-2 income is $675,262. Let's start with my wife's contribution. She made $139,728 in 2021. She's okay. a senior software engineer, engineering manager. She quit her job as a manager early in 2021 at a medium sized company and joined a startup later in the year as a senior developer. So this wage represents a partial year of work. Like all startups, she took a pay cut when she joined in exchange for getting on the ground floor. I won't go too much into detail since this channel isn't about her, but the takeaway is that your partner really matters. It matters a lot. Okay, one sec. So she worked as a software engineering manager at a medium sized company. So she was probably making like 300 plus at least. Then she joined a startup and then it was how much? Okay, 139. And he said, he said it was a partial year of work because she left in the middle, but it's a tax return. So it should be the combined across all the things she did, right? 140 is less for even a senior software engineering engineer at a startup. 
that's interesting. I would still expect it to be like 200 plus cash, maybe 180 or something, and then a lot of equity, maybe a bonus or something. So that's interesting. But yes, I mean, Steve's right. You have two people. It matters, right? Like how much they bring, how much you bring, it all it all accumulates together. My salary last year was $535,533. Wait, that's, that's less than I would have thought, right? I feel like so many, not mid-level, but senior engineers at like Meta and stuff make about 500 grand a year or maybe 450 or something. But I, I would expect a principal to make so much more than that. I, w I wonder why that is. It feels low to me for a principal software engineer. My base wage in 2021 was 160,000 and RSUs or restricted stock units, basically stock grants as salary was 375,533. My compensation is really tied to the performance of the stock price. Last year, that wasn't so bad. This year it's bad. I'm on track to make about $100,000 less this year. On top of investment losses for 2022, we might make 25 or even 50% less than last year. This smarts a bit, but my world isn't crashing down. First, part of working at my company is stock-based compensation. Every year can't be a windfall year. The expectation is that some years aren't gonna be as good as other years. If stock goes down, companies are like, oh, let me top you up and bring you back to the TC that you were promised or were making before. Amazon does that, Meta does that. They do refreshers that give you yearly bonuses, performance is rewarded. Not everyone does that. I know companies like Microsoft do not do this. If it goes down, they just say, tough luck, work harder to bring the price up. I think someone, like some dude literally said it. Whenever an, uh, Microsoft was complaining about not getting yearly bonuses and they stopped promotions, so the CTO or some VP was basically like, hey, don't complain, just work harder so our stock goes back up. And it was such an insensitive thing to say. Not everyone does this. So Steve is lucky. On October of 2007, the stock price was $7.55. And by December of 2008, dude. the price tumbled to $2 and 10 cents. My compensation was adjusted for the next year to account for the nearly 75% drop in value. I didn't know it at the time, but the RSU grants in 2008 set me up to have an unbelievable amount of income when the economy did make a recovery. The stock price went up 500% in the next three years and 5,000% in the next 10 years. Oh. While I'm not expecting anywhere Dude. near the same amount of- Shivers, shivers. Stock went up 500% in the next three years and then 5,000% since like, I'm getting goosebumps. Oh, can you imagine making that much money? This man's probably worth $10 million more. Oh, dude, that's crazy. I sold some things at the absolute bottom because of course I did, but the high highs only came because of the low lows. Yep, one more thing to remember when everyone's like, oh, Amazon grew 5,000%. It's like, yes, if you held that entire time and holding money, Holding stock is hard. Last year, when the tech sector was growing like gangbusters, I thought to myself, should I go work for Meta, Coinbase, or Stripe and get hundreds and thousands more? It may be different if I was in a different phase in my career, but at this point, I'm unlikely to increase my chances of major promotion by moving companies. And there's a non-zero chance that my quality of life would go down if I moved. So at least for me, as long as my compensation is in line with the industry or better over time, I'm good. I'm not gonna grind myself into a fine dust. They work hard. They compensate really well and you can make more money than almost anywhere else if you work hard, but they pip, they don't give you many benefits, perks, they're quite frugal. They're known for that. It was interesting when he said his work-life balance could get worse by going to somewhere like Coinbase or Meta, Stripe. Meta works hard too, but Amazon seems like has the worst rep. So I would almost think that you try to leave Amazon to have a better quality of life. It's interesting that he said basically the opposite. Once you get to these kind of steps, then money stops mattering because you're gonna stay in that step for a while. So don't become complacent, still work hard, try to finesse where you can, invest, make more money, but remember that the other things in your life are gonna make you happier, much more than the step, the, the incremental growth in income. Let's talk about taxes. We're in the highest tax bracket in the US. It's a graduated system, so not all of my income is taxed at that rate. I paid Uncle Sam $322,474. It's, it's insane how many people don't understand this. Marginal income tax, it's graduated. So when you make a mill at the top rack, it's 50%. You don't get taxed 50% of a mill. 18% of something, and then 23% of something, and then 30% of something, and then eventually whatever's left gets taxed at the highest bracket. Dollars in taxes, which brings my effective tax rate to around 36.1%. Washington state has no state income tax. So after taxes, we netted $707,927. It's higher taxes because the US is the highest income in the world. As a software engineer, you make more money in the United States than you do literally anywhere else. So yes, there are more taxes. That's the cost of getting the big bucks. I'd maximize my earnings where I was, save what I could, invest in the long term, and retire faster. And that's how we got over 
it, it's crazy. Like most things in life are quite simple. If you want to lose weight and get abs, eat healthy and go to the gym. I mean, making money is easy. It's hard, but in principle, it's easy. Try to get the highest paying job, invest that money into things that will get you more money. Either that's yourself or the stock market. Don't touch that investment for a long time and then retire. That's it. If you want to build wealth, that is the three-part solution. Everyone else, thanks for being here. I will see you all very soon. Cheers.